All right, welcome to Community Focus here on Channel 6 TV. Glad you could join us tonight. I'm your host, Kenny Fogel. And we're going to talk a little bit about something. Well, we're going to follow up a little bit. We have Robbie Smith in here with the uh, UK Extension Office and talked to us a little bit a few weeks ago about planting. We were talking about planting the uh, uh, plants in the garden and what your lawn's going to look like. Well, let's come back in and sort of follow up. We're, we're, did, did all your predictions and everything? I mean, we didn't really make predictions. Yeah, hey, that, that's a beautiful thing. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> Go back and watch the old yeah. show. <laughs> but, well, basically, where are we right now? I mean, I know my yard is just growing through the roof. It, it is, and um, that's dedication to our night temperatures now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were still in uh, pretty cool night temperatures. Wasn't a lot of growth going along. Uh, and then we've been through a, a number of days um, before this week that were wet or at least cloudy mm -hmm. and humid and all these kind of things. So we're seeing some things in the garden that um, that we hope rectifies itself as we warm up here. We're seeing yellowness on peppers. We're seeing tomatoes that aren't really happy looking from having wet feet and cool temperatures. Uh, we're seeing a lot of brown patch on fescue lines, especially some of our newer fescue lines and mm -hmm. lower areas that are that are stay moist from yeah. dew and things uh, for a longer period of time. We're seeing that happening right now. Um, you know, when we get this 90 degrees as they're forecasted through this week and sunny, a lot of those things will fix themselves. Mm -hmm. The thing we have to remember though is as we get into this and we get the breezes like we have out there to, today, um, that things can dry out pretty fast. Well, I was going to ask you, we'll go to, yeah. we're gonna, now we're going to start watering. Probably. Yes, absolutely. I was looking at my garden last night and the top surface is just, I've already got the cracks starting to show back up yeah. and you know, we've had a lot of dreary weather but we also haven't in my area haven't had a lot of rainfall with it mm -hmm. just been you know sluggish yeah uh, but you know everything's growing fairly well uh, i think with this temperature change that we're having now we're going to see things straighten up and, and move along just fine well, uh, other than mother nature i mean but there's not a whole lot you and i can do i guess we, we put the fertilizer down at the end of the year but right now watering is about the best thing we can do. now i've heard a different thing watering in the morning the evening yeah. what time is the best time to water always best to water in the morning mm -hmm. it has a chance for the plant to dry off mm -hmm. uh, if you are irrigating sub surface if you're your drip irrigation or something you water anytime you want to but we uh, if we're watering over top then we want to do that in the morning so that it has an opportunity to dry off during the day. And, and when you water, I mean, it's just not just a rose, run the hose over 30 seconds or that's 30, a, 30 a minutes. Shower, well, yeah. yeah, basically, but that's really, are you wasting your time if you do that, aren't you? You know, uh, we want to give, when we water, we want to give them an inch of water. Mm -hmm. We want to get a deep watering. So it takes some time to stand out there and do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I use uh, little sprinklers or I, now I'm using drip irrigation. That's a, it's a pretty inexpensive fix for that. And, and I'll run that for, you know, 30, 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. A good rule of thumb, a good way to measure how you're doing with water is if you take a mason jar lid, turn it upside down in the garden, and kind of forget about it. And as you water the garden, ever how you do that, check it after you get done. Mm -hmm. If you happen to have gotten that full, then you did a pretty good job. But if you barely have any water in it, you really need to amend your practice and spend more time watering and just, yeah. you know, then don't sit there and water the top, you know, the lid that you've yeah. got turned upside down, but just like you would normally do. And it kind of gives you an idea of how much water you're yeah. delivering out there in the garden too. All right. Well, like I said, uh, the, we, I mentioned we are, you talked earlier, so now it depends on what kind of spring we have as to what's going to look like later on down yeah. the road. What kind of spring do we have? Spring is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. All in all, it's been a really good spring. We've had adequate moisture. If we have to complain about something, it was a little bit cool ramping mm -hmm. up. Um, but I think that that will... The plants that are really susceptible to those root diseases are going to go away and we have to replant some of those things. But for the most part, everything will recover nicely and like our turf will recover nicely. We won't even see a problem with that mm -hmm. coming in the near future. But well, speaking of lawns, mm -hmm. now I, I did a, a, a preventer earlier on for grab, crabgrass mm -hmm. and it worked pretty well. And then, and then a couple of weeks ago, I put down some weed killer for supposedly supposed to kill weeds. Well, I don't know. It sort of seemed like my Johnson grass, it either fed it or something because it's sprouting ahead of the rest of the yard. And that's why I keep mowing because the Johnson grass keeps jumping. Yeah. And anything you put down to get rid of um, weeds is generally purpose for broadleaf weeds mm -hmm. and not Johnson grass. Johnson grass is a grass, right. just like the grass that you're trying to grow. So we don't have a, a selective herbicide that can take out Johnson grass out of a fescue lawn. Mm. We can do some techniques of suppressing it with some other chemicals, but 
that gets a little little more sophisticated management. Uh, some of our so I'm going to have to mow more often then. <laughs> well, you know, the more pressure you put on Johnson grass mowing like that, uh -huh. the less you'll have over the long run. Never let it go to seed. Never let it. Uh, you can a little trick that you can do is let it get above the lawn uh -huh. and wick on an herbicide like a, a glyphosate, which uh -huh. is in Roundup and many other products now. But glyphosate, you can wick it on with a uh, paintbrush or something mm -hmm. that's above everything else and you can kill it off that away. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, you know there are some other products but that gets a little bit more sophisticated than the homeowner. You'll see that our, our, our county and state roads uh, crews use a product that can suppress it. Mm -hmm. Now it'll come back by the end of the year but it suppresses it pretty good. Alright, well is there any other tips we need to know right now or we're just going to what, see what's going to happen the rest of the summer we'll go through drought and whatever else we go through. Two or three things you want to really watch out for right now. Um, Aphids are really bad on daylilies. Mm -hmm. That's a little soft-bodied insect. Look down inside there and you'll see some debris and so forth. Uh, find something, uh, whether it's an insecticidal soap or something like that, just to keep those at, at bay. Uh, we are going to see spider mites become a problem as we move through, and that's things like your arborvitaes and uh, spruce and a number of other things. Mm -hmm. uh, keep an eye out for those. And you know, by the middle of this month, uh, bagworms the ones that hang off of the tree yeah. uh, will be out June 15th. What's the best thing to do with them? Just pick them off? Pick them off them? if you can get them. Yeah. yeah, pick them off. You know, I get a lot of calls right now for potato bugs. Mm -hmm. Best thing for those is to walk that row and find a little orange egg mass on the back of the leaf and just squish that. That gets rid of, you know, 25, 30 adults right there in one yeah. thumb thumbnail. So get rid of those. Um, you know, the old products aren't working very well on potato bugs now, yeah. so potato beetles. So you can use some other things. Uh, one active ingredient called spinosad that comes in a number of different products works really, has started to, has shown to be pretty effective the last few years mm -hmm. on them. So you may switch up. Okay. Seven just doesn't seem to be very effective on them anymore. Yeah, I know my wife's been working on it. So I've got a couple plants around the house that had some, looked like fungus on them. Now she sprayed it and now I look at little white spots on them. So I don't know what's coming up, what, what that's yeah, all about. They, it could be a lot of different things uh, going on there. But normally, like I mentioned, spider mites, when you, know you have spider mites you'll get what we call speckling on the leaf mm -hmm. well maybe so that's what a it white, is light speckling look uh -huh. to the leaf and that's an indicator and the easy test to find out is to tap that leaf on a piece of white paper and if you see the little bitty spots the very little bitty spots moving around uh -huh. you've probably got uh, spider mites starting to and what do you and you just have a anything in particular that goes on that well i tell you spider mites can be rampant when we're dry because they can't stand a raindrop. They're really mm -hmm. small and you'll, you'll splatter them down on the ground, they can't get back up. So uh -huh. a simple fix for spider mites a lot of times is just either a soapy water or a, a harder blast of water on the plant to oh, get rid okay. of them. All right, well, we're gonna have you back in off and on throughout the year, just sort of update. I like to keep things going just throughout the year because yep. that's, that's the thing I've learned about what little bit of farming I know is, is a, everything's month to month. I mean, it is, it is. If you plan ahead, you're just, a, it's, it's a crystal ball <laughs> more so than anything. Yeah. Because then you have to go back and look and see where you are the last two weeks to see what you're gonna do the next two yeah, weeks. Yeah, we, we have to do everything on the average. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've got a lot of history that tells us just like that that uh, bagworm, we know that on average it emerges around 15th. Uh -huh. This year it'll probably be a smidge later than that. Yeah. But we we just go by averages that we, we know when to look. Okay, and I know you're going to go out and pick kale. I mean, it's yeah. hard that time of year. Yeah, we're going to go pick a little kale this afternoon. Yeah, so you're, uh, so even on your time off, you're farming. Well, I ain't, I ain't <laughs> off. So this is, this is part of um, something that we're working on is our neighborly nutrition program that we're trying to get more healthy food choices into our food banks. Uh -huh. And uh, we've got a farmer that's partnered with us. And so I'm taking a small crew out uh, this afternoon and we're gonna pick a few bags of kale to go to the food bank. Absolutely yeah. wonderful. So everybody benefits. That's yeah. just yeah. what anybody can participate in that uh -huh. and, and grow some extra produce this summer and, and put it into our food banks, anyone you want to choose, you know. It, it's always uh, a blessing to get good healthy choices for, mm -hmm. for folks as well. Well UK's got an extension office in every county in the state that I know of so if somebody wants to get a hold of you they I know you're at the Civic Center on South 3rd Street. Yeah uh, the extension office there on 317 South 3rd Street you can give me a call at 348-9204 uh, email me I'm, I'm on that all the time with robsmith at uky.edu
All right, well, now you got some answers. Now you got some well, place to go to get some more questions answered. So uh, you know what you do? We're going to see if we can get you through the year and get everybody fed and get out and have a happy garden. I do it for a hobby, but I love to eat. So. Very good, yeah. <laughs> All right, stick around. We've got Robbie Smith here from UK Extension Office. We appreciate him coming in, updating us on what's going on in the world of agriculture. And hopefully you all doing a good job. And your your uh, lawn, garden, flowers, and everything are blooming just the way you want them to be. If not, Give them a call. All right, we're going to take a break here right now. We come back. We'll have more here on Community Focus here on Channel 6 TV right after this.